We are here. Would you like to ask us a question? There are many reasons. One is a psychological reason in that as you are raising your frequency into the higher dimensions, you are gaining access to many of your other incarnations, your other third and fourth incarnations. And the there are, of course, many uncomfortable ways to die as the human form believes that it does. But one of the worst is to be stabbed in the back for within that time frame, it was a dishonorable thing. It was that you didn't have a chance to turn and to face and to fight. And so there was very often a karmic scar within that area. And that karmic scar would move in and out through different incarnations. And within this reality, all of your incarnations, all of your embodiments on earth, they want to come forward, as well as all of your parallel realities on earth and your alternate realities on earth. And so all these different realities are clamoring to get your attention, for you are the point of ascension. You are the conductor of your ship, so to speak. And so the psychological reason for that pain in the back, in different areas of the back, is that release of times in your life in which you were stabbed in the back for whatever reason. And in result to that, we invite you each to turn around and confront the one that would do that to you and send them unconditional love and unconditional forgiveness. For if they stabbed you in the back, then there was likely something that you did to them. And all you are wanting to end the cycle of revenge, victim, fear, anger, all of that is wanting to fall away to the higher frequencies of reality. There is also about the balancing of the flow of Kundalini. And the flow of Kundalini is the right and the left and the grounding in the middle. And this is the masculine flow and the feminine flow and the grounding flow in the middle. And the chakras, as they spin, they cross back and forth like the sedasius with one thing, one solid line up the middle. And when it comes to the back, of the heart, the high heart, that area, and even the top of the third, the solar plexus, your power within. As it comes to that part, there is very often a, almost a bottleneck of the Kundalini energy because a lot of emotion can flow through. And also, your breath and your heartbeat and your ability to have consciousness is uh, it's something that you remember and so you there are times that you remember again where you could not breathe or you did die or you did leave and you're feeling that energy and it wants to come up you want it to be released from you now. And this is where the psychological and the physical interblend, which is really what the Kundalini is about. 
So the Kundalini energy is integrating that masculine and feminine energy. And if the masculine gets ahead of the feminine, then the energy will be very hot and cause a burning sensation. If the feminine gets ahead of the masculine, the energy will be very cold and uh, inward, maybe a, perhaps a depressive energy. And so right within that heart area, it's a great challenge to keep the kundalinis, the three, the grounding one strong and the masculine and the feminine in track with each other. And then there is one more. And the third is that all of your interpretation of light language occurs within your high heart. And you receive the light language in through your crown. You perceive it with your third eye, but it goes into your Atma, the wisdom, power, and love, which is your library, your interdimensional library of all of the realities. And this is how you are able to remember to translate the light language into a language that you can use in your daily life. This often causes fatigue, frustration, disappointment, and anger which, along with the other two reasons, this makes for a common place in the physical body that is going through many challenges within the same moment. as well as as the kundalini moves all the way up through your body and it innervates, it completes its journey, the feminine kundalini comes up your left side and ends in your left nostril and the masculine kundalini goes up your right side and ends in your right nostril. So when you are having a nostril specific it's not just your entire nasal cavity, but one specific nostril. It's about the integrating of your feminine, your masculine kundalini energy, about your coming to... This also has to do with the eye of Horus, the right eye and the left eye, and Horus is the child, the the mother Isis, the father Osiris, and the child, the divine child, humanity being the divine child, about finding an expression of your masculine energy that integrates your, your feminine heart and your ability to love deeply and your kindness. And it's quite difficult for men of this day and age to find you are creating the new man, the man who is not afraid of his feminine energy and can integrate it with his masculine energy. And many men are very terrified and act out and become angry and aggressive. And other men have symptoms. And synchronizing the masculine and feminine energy is a very difficult challenge and a very important challenge because the way to synchronize the inflow and the outflow and the, you know, the sun, the moon, the masculine, the feminine to move into your true androgynous being is to balance those two energy fields within yourself. You are in the process of shifting your energy fields. The skin is 
the firewall and while being a third dimensional being it is that third fourth dimensional aura that creates that firewall of protection however throughout the process of now you are having a much higher frequency of protection and it is burning it is a bit too intense for your skin and skin is the largest organ of the body and everybody has stronger organs and weaker organs and some whichever is your weaker organ will be the organ that is having the most difficulty holding these higher frequencies of light and skin is always challenged a because it's a very huge organ and b it is challenged because it is also how you interface with your daily world and so as you are making a psychological shift in how you interact with your daily world as a multidimensional being and a physiological shift of how you interact with your daily world in that your daily world is no longer just third dimensional your daily world now is many other dimensions that are beginning to creep into the sides of your visions and into your dreams and into your wakingness and into a moment when you should be concentrating on something else and in comes yet another new reality Yes, it is psychic whiplash because you are walking to your third dimensional world, living your third dimensional world, and then suddenly you're zap. Oh, there is a difficult word, but I know that all of you, each of you have had this experience where just for a moment you feel almost like you go out ahead of yourself and come back. Mm -hmm. There's like a whoosh that moves through you. And sometimes you feel dizzy, sometimes you feel nauseated, sometimes you get disoriented, sometimes you forget. But what's happening is that suddenly you have, you're testing. It's, uh, it's like you were on a trampoline and you go, you jump up and you have this wonderful feeling and then you go down to the trampoline and the trampoline goes down and then you go back up. Then you go down, then you go back up. And that's why you're so tired. Because there are so many neurological shifts. These, amongst the myriad things, your body, your physical body, has been calibrated to recognize glucose as food. However, your light body recognizes light as food. That means every single atom of your entire body, every single atom that goes into the mitochondria is needing to experience and accept some new kind of food. And those that are breatharians, they make the shift because at that moment of death, there's a hormone that flushes through your entire body. And this allows you to accept light as food but you have to experience death, flatlined death. Well, people don't really want to do that, and it is a big risk. And the energies are so much higher now than they have ever been. But all of you are the prototypes. And just like those jet planes that crashed and those new cars that don't steer well, you're a prototype. You're a prototype for the admin Kadman, the being that is to be light. You are a living experiment, every one of you. Yes. The bleed through. Many of you are having the bleed through. 
And when you have the experience of the bleed through, it's as if someone opened a curtain just for a second and closed it so quickly and so quietly that you wonder if you actually saw that or not. But you did see it. And what is best is to recognize that it's a bleed through. Make sure that you are grounded. And if you are in a time, place, and situation that you can sit down and focus on that bleed through, meditate on that bleed through, go right ahead and do so. And if it is not a time such as you're with a group or you're walking or driving, if you are walking or driving or in any way that your body is not safe, say, and Suzelle got this in a dream very clearly, in a dream, she got, we will say it for her, I am a multidimensional master and I choose when I teleport. It is very vital that you all remember that. Mm -hmm. You choose when you teleport. Mm -hmm. For the reality is that mm -hmm. beings on the other mm -hmm. side, they forgot what it's like on the physical world. They forgot how fragile the physical form is. And they're so happy to get a hold of you. They're so happy to bleed through and say, oh, look, it's an ascending person. They're beginning to ascend. Hello. And they want to pull you through. And that's fine if you're sitting down and you're meditating and your body is safe. But if you're driving a car, that's not fine. It is important it's that you remember that it's real. It is real. And it's so real you want to be very serious about it. This is when you use a violet flame. Blaze, blaze, blaze of violet fire, transmuting all shadow into light, light, light. In this manner, you protect yourself and you assist that person because that person is probably stuck because as every time you let in light, there's a purging of darkness. And sometimes... That darkness does not want to leave. Or sometimes you didn't leave, pull in enough light or you weren't paying close enough attention or you're under great stress. That's always a challenge if someone is under great stress or they're physically ill or they're fatigued or they're in a bad mood. Then sometimes that lower part will, get, will hold on instead of be released like it needs to be. Dreams actually last less than three seconds to your physical brain. So you could easily have 10, 15, 20 dreams in one given sleep cycle. And some of them may well be multidimensional. Some of them may be continuations where you forgot a certain part and then you picked it up later on. And if you write them down, then you will begin to make sense of them. And so then you can lay them out in front of you like a jigsaw puzzle and see if the dreams come together to give you a higher message. Most of them are higher. The fourth dimensional dreams are not usually dreams that one chooses to remember when they're in the process of ascension. The fourth dimensional dreams are very often doing rescue work and working with lower frequency people, or sometimes it is moving through past lifetimes. And the only fourth dimensional dreams that you would really choose to remember would be dreams within your highest frequency of maybe your mental plane or your 
spiritually or I am presence. We wonder why you would call it an attack. If it feels like it is a darkness, that would be synonymous with the word attack. If it feels blissful and unconditional loving, it's probably one of your angels reaching down to tuck you in. And if it feels like an attack, pull in your guides, have your guides stand around you and clear your energy field so that you can move through that frequency of energy before you slip into your night body. There are some people who have volunteered to stay with Gaia for as long as Gaia as long as that contract, there was a contract form to interact and to maintain an earth vessel for as long as their contract with Gaia was to maintain that earth vessel. For what you need to remember is that you are not ascending, you are returning. You already are a fifth dimensional being and a sixth dimensional, a seventh dimensional, an eighth dimensional. You didn't start off as a physical person. You started off in source and you moved through all the different frequencies of reality coming down here into this third, fourth dimensional frequency of reality. But all of the other frequencies of yourself are all still there. And some of you will just drop that being, which is what people did when they had personal ascensions, because they withdrew all of their attention from their physical being and moved it into their fifth dimensional being. And Yogananda, he was in state for two weeks and nothing happened. He didn't rot his body was light and he transmuted his body into light and then he left and it looked like he died but he ascended and there'll be many different versions of ascension and some people hold bodies longer on the body of Gaia because they came specifically to work with the planet and they are plugging their energy into the planetary ascension but that doesn't mean they're not also living in their fifth, sixth, and seventh dimensional self. So it's not that we are leaving, it's that we are remembering, we are connecting. We are connecting the third, fourth dimensional component with ourselves through our life body with that multidimensional component of ourselves. And once we move into that multidimensional state, the, the essence of ourself that has been put into this physical form that forgot, which is a big challenge because it forgot, once we fully remember and can pull that remembrance all the way in to connect with our multidimensional self, then we are fully conscious on the earth like an ascended master. And some ascended masters hold bodies and some ascended, ma well, I think they all hold them and they store them and jump in and out of them at any given time. St. Germain has been well known for popping in and out of his body over hundreds of years. El Moria, he's done the same. Katumi. Raphael is not a descended master, but Raphael is popping in and out a lot. Gabriel popping in and out a lot. So some of the higher beings are willing to expose themselves to the third dimensional frequency, third, fourth dimensional frequency more often because that's their contribution. 
And so now all of us learning within ourselves and feeling within ourselves that there is no right way, there is no wrong way, that we are in this process of a beautiful unity consciousness. And this unity consciousness has dashed off into a billion, seven billion, I heard, is it 10 billion now? Billions of tiny stars. Some of those stars got lost in the darkness. And it might take them a while before they are able to return to the sun that they are. And some of the lights, some of those stars are ready now. And they are the vanguard. They are the beginnings. And blessing be to all. <laughs>